Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. In the name of the living and true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This Easter, our family got some peeps. Not the sugary marshmallow kind, but some actual baby chickens. We ordered them several months ago, and they have arrived just in time for the global pandemic. So now at the top of my list of home quarantine projects is a chicken coop. And recently I experimented with a little chick-sized prototype. I built a small wooden structure, wrapped it in chicken wire, and the most important part of the project was the door. Because what's the point without a door? After some trial and error, including putting one of the hinges on backwards, the door was complete, and it took the chicks less than a day to figure out what it was. Now, when anyone enters the room, they waddle straight over the, to the door and just kind of stand there looking up like, okay, let's do this, we're ready to go. They're still clearly getting used to the whole quarantine thing. Now, of course, the big project is still to come, the full-size outdoor chicken coop. And the stakes are much higher. There are all sorts of savvy and persistent predators that would love nothing more than a free chicken dinner. And once again, the most important part of the structure will be the door. It needs to be secure enough to keep the chickens safely in and the predators safely out. In today's gospel, our Lord uses imagery not of chickens, but of sheep, and not of a poultry farmer, but of a shepherd. This is the famous passage, John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Though we don't actually hear this verse in today's reading, Jesus does allude to himself as the shepherd of the sheep in verse 2, saying, He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the one who enters by the door. This is in sharp contrast to the thieves and the robbers who do not use the door. These are the predators. These enter not by the door. They climb in by another way. One of the first and most important lessons that we can learn from this teaching is that the spiritual life is not a neutral endeavor. It is not a passive affair. The stakes are real. They are high, dangerous even. There is conflict. We have a spiritual adversary. We renounce this adversary in our baptismal covenant and we name him by name, Satan, and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. And our Lord in today's gospel teaches plainly that the singular desire of our adversary is, as he says, only to steal and kill and destroy. But this is not so with our Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. He has come not to steal, but to provide, not to destroy, but to create and produce and build up and bless. He has come not to kill, not to take life, but to give life. He came that we might have life and have it abundantly. The saving work of our crucified and risen Lord is set squarely within the context of an adversary with whom he is at radical cross-purposes. If this were not so, what use would we have for a sheepfold to keep us safe and a shepherd to lead us and care for us and comfort and protect us? But before Jesus reveals himself as the good shepherd, he says something both mysterious and provocative. He says, I am the door of the sheep. 
If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. What a marvelous meditation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not only the shepherd of the sheep, the one who enters by the door, but he is also himself the door, the entrance, the opening, the passageway, the point of access to the sheepfold, to the flock, to the people of God, the kingdom of heaven. According to St. Theodore of Mopsuestia, one of the church fathers, Jesus says he is the door of the sheep because he is the principal access to truth for everyone. He very appropriately calls himself the door of the sheep since there is no other way to seek out the truth except by believing first of all in our Lord and drawing near to the entrance of truth through his commandments. St. John Chrysostom presses the mystery even further, pointing out that as God's word, the door is both our Lord Jesus Christ, that word made flesh, and the Holy Scriptures, the word of God. St. John Chrysostom says that Jesus rightly calls the scriptures a door, for they bring us to God and open to us the knowledge of God. They make us his sheep. They guard us and do not let the wolves come in after us. For whoever does not use the scriptures, but climbs up some other way, that is, who cuts out for himself another and an unusual way, the same is a thief, St. John writes. The word of God, in all of his fullness, is the door to the sheepfold. But the mystery goes deeper still. The church fathers teach that there is a key to this door. And without the key, well, the door is of little use. St. Clement of Alexandria teaches that those who pervert the divine words instead of using them rightly, neither enter into the kingdom of heaven themselves, nor do they permit those whom they have deluded to attain the truth. He says, they do not have the key for the entrance, but rather they have a false key. Using this counterfeit key, they do not enter in as we enter in, that is, through the tradition of the Lord by drawing aside the curtain. Instead, they burst through the side door and dig clandestinely through the wall of the church. They step over the truth and constitute themselves the mystagogues of the soul of the impious. Without the proper key, with a false key or a counterfeit key, one cannot enter by the true door, our Lord Jesus Christ. But instead, St. Clement says that one must burst through the side door or clandestinely through the wall. These ones step over the truth, he says, and they declare themselves mystagogues, that is, sacred teachers. What then is the right key, the true key, the only key that is able to open the door? It is what St. Clement refers to as the tradition of, of the Lord. That is, it is the Lord's own teaching and revelation, both of who he is, the very word and son of God, fully God and fully man, and also the true meaning of his word. This key, the tradition of the Lord, is none other than the apostolic faith the faith of the apostles, that which they received from the Lord himself, from the word himself. You might remember last week, we had the reading of our, the risen Lord's appearance on the road to Emmaus, where he taught those disciples all the things in the Holy Scriptures pertaining to himself. The apostolic faith 
is the Word's own interpretation of the Word given to the apostles who receive it and understand it by the illumination of the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. This apostolic faith they carefully preserve with their very lives, some even unto death, passing it down from generation to generation. This is the same faith that we hear of in today's reading from the book of Acts. We learn that after the faithful are baptized, they continue not in the reading of Holy Scripture, that's not what it says, but they continue in the apostles' teaching. This is the key without which the true meaning of the word cannot be discerned. There are many who point to, who appeal to the scriptures, but with wildly different interpretations of meaning. The brokenness of the church on earth is a mirror reflection of these vastly different interpretations of meaning. It is not enough to appeal to the word of God in order to enter the sheepfold, one must also have the right key, the right understanding of who that word is and what that word means. This key is the tradition of the Lord, the apostolic faith. It's interesting to note that the bishops of the church are the successors of the apostles. They are the ones who are called to guard this key, to guard this interpretation, to guard the apostolic faith. In fact, in the ordination rite for bishops, it says plainly that a bishop in God's holy church is called to be one with the apostles in proclaiming Christ's resurrection and interpreting the gospel. They are called to be one with the apostles in interpreting the gospel. And the ordinand is then immediately charged with these words, you are called to guard the faith. St. Peter in today's epistle uses this same word, guard, writing, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. That word guardian in Greek, get this, is actually episkopos, like the same word we use for Episcopal church, the same word that we translate most often as bishop, episkopos. But that Greek word also and rightly means and is translated as guardian. Guardian of the flock, guardian of the faith, following in the footsteps of the apostles who themselves followed our Lord himself, who is the good shepherd and guardian of our souls. In these strange days, it is challenging for us to feel like a flock. We cannot gather together, we cannot sing together or pray together, worship together, commune together. And this is no small thing. We are physical beings created to be in physical relationship with one another. And so much of what we do physically as Christians points us to the much deeper spiritual reality of life. But we do well to remember that this deeper spiritual reality of life has gone nowhere. We must not mistake our physical nature for the spiritual nature of our identity as the body of Christ, the flock of God. We may still commune with the word made flesh through his holy scriptures, we may still be illumined by the true meaning of the word through our study of the apostolic faith. We may still worship and sing and pray. 
we can be sure that our spiritual adversaries are certainly not in quarantine. And thanks be to God, neither is our Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd and guardian of our souls. He is truly risen. He is truly alive. He is truly present. As the psalmist writes, he leads us beside still waters. He revives our souls. He guides us along right pathways. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we have nothing to fear, for he is with us. In the name of the living and true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.